Good morning and welcome to our Mother's Day service of worship here in the Six. My name's Simeon and I'm one of the curates here in the Six. So Mother's Day is a day of joy and of celebration, a day when we say thank you to our mothers. But we should also acknowledge that it is a day of mixed emotions for many of us. A day when many experience a sense of loss, of grief. For some this is a specific loss, for others it is a loss of what was hoped for. But we worship a God that is big enough to hold all of that, the joy and the pain. And so as we come before God in worship, he knows exactly what we are feeling. He has experienced it all, and he invites us to come as we are, to draw close to him, to shelter under the shadow of his wings. And so, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice with thanks for all those who have mothered us in our lives in a world that is broken and in need of your motherly love. Please use us to aid others as you do in us, providing comfort, nurture, protection and support. We ask that you grow us as carers to those who need us, so that we might celebrate your goodness together, even through our own brokenness. Amen. And so let us sit, raise our voices in worship.
And so we come now to our time of confession. Let's just take a moment of pause before God to ask him to, to stir up anything in us that we need to, to bring before him. So we say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Lord, you know our struggle to serve you. When sin spoils our lives and overshadows our hearts, come to our aid and turn us back to you again. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 to 22. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I have become as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I have become as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from the God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I may win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord, that you would meet us afresh today, that you would speak to our hearts today, that you would minister to us today in your name and through your word. Amen. Well, happy Mother's Day. And as it's Mother's Day, I thought that I would begin by um, sharing with you a story about my mum. Well, I was six and it had been one of those very rare days where it had been snowing. I'd been sledging. I'd had a brief and very one-sided snowball fight with my older brother and now I wanted to build a snowman. I gathered all the snow that was left in our area and set about making the best snowman that any six-year-old had ever created. Happy with my creation, I decided to go in. But no sooner had I stepped inside the house and my fingers met the warmth, pain shooting through my hands. My fingers were in more pain than they'd ever experienced up to that point. Tears streamed down my face and I started howling. My mum rushed in from the other room, probably expecting to find me with my leg half hanging off or something. Between the sobs, I explained what was going on and she knew just what to do. She scooped me up, held me close and taking my hands, she started to rub them to get the blood supply moving in my chilled fingers once more. Well, I'm ashamed to say that I did get rather cross. Nothing was happening. My fingers still hurt. But she kept on, not really saying much, just calmly massaging on. And little by little, my hands came back to life. The pain went away. A very motherly thing to do. So, you may ask, what has all this got to do with the topic that we're looking at? That growing good, that, that looking at the topic of church growth? Well, it all has to start with God and God's love. 
And this is a picture of God's love and cares for us. He is like a mother scooping us up. He holds us close, letting us know that he is there for us when things are difficult. He works all things together for the good of those that love him. And he knows what we need before it is even on our lips. It is this radical love and acceptance that Paul met on the road to Damascus where Jesus first called him. I think that it is this place of being loved and accepted that informed all of Paul's ministry. He was so secure in his identity in God and it was that that allowed him to take on this chameleon-like nature that he describes in our reading. And so we need to be secure in that love, to be rooted deep into that love in order to, to live out our Christian faith, to reach out to others. That phrase, I am all things to all people, at first may raise a few concerns. Where is his integrity? If he's acting under the law at some points and not at others, where is his sense of what is right and wrong? Well, I think that what he's trying to get at in this is that he is secure in what is important. And when he knows that, the rest falls away compared with this. He knows the gospel message that he wants to get across. And he doesn't want any barriers to people being able to hear this. Does it really matter in the end if he eats meat offered to idols or not? The Growing Good topic asks us to look at how we do church and thinking about what are those non-negotiables for us. And another question, are there things that we are holding on to that can get away, get in the way of us sharing God's love? When I first looked at this topic of, of growing good and Mother's Day, I, I, I wrestled with um, how can I hold these two simil seemingly different things together, Mother's Day and those characteristics that have been identified as being significant in the lives of churches that have experienced growth rather than decline in the last few years. How can I fit them together? Well, with a little thought, actually, they fit together quite nicely. The first topic, perseverance, well, um, presence, sorry. Um, well, that's what family is all about. Motherhood is all about being together, sharing life together. And then perseverance. Well, any parent that has been ill um, while looking after their kids can tell you. Getting up, getting on, pushing through it, even though you're ill, that takes perseverance. And hospitality, that welcome for all. Well, um, uh, being able to, to feed the friends coming round for tea at the drop of a hat. Hospitality adaptability that we're looking at today well i think that comes under the last topic as well the, the feeding friends and participation all joining in and growing through experience is about what that nurturing is about not doing everything for your children but allowing them to have a go allowing them to to fail and to to grow through those experiences as an institution that as the church we need to look at our structures are they welcoming are they hospitable and are they adaptable which is what we're looking at today but we also need to think about how we do this as individuals that we are rooted in that parental love of God how do we reach out to those around us? Well, since Teresa of Avila, she wrote a poem which I think addresses this quite nicely. Christ has no body but yours. 
No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks with compassion on the wor this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, yours are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. We can be God's hands and feet. In other words, God can use us to show other people that God loves them. Just like my mum massaging my hands showed me that she loves me. By helping others, we can show them that God loves them. God's love passes through us to them. But practically, how do we do this? Well, I think that it's about listening to where God is at work and joining in with that work that he's already begun. How, as a church, does this practically look? Well, joining in with those others that may come to know and experience the living love of God that he calls them to. And I think that we as church and as individuals can do three things with this. Pray it, preach it and practice it. The three Ps. Pray it. Asking for God's heart for others. Asking God to give us his love and his heart for others. And then asking for opportunities to show that. Preach it. Well, it's about telling our stories. Stories are so powerful. We, we share our stories of God's impact on our lives. And that means so much more than any well-crafted argument can ever do. And then finally, practice it. Have a go. If you see a need, meet that need. See, have a go. Practice that. On the local news, there was a mother of three boys, and she was saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, but we don't have much. Our house is not big. It will mean that there'll be quite a lot of disruption for us. The boys will have to, to move rooms and share, but I wanted to do it. I wanted to open our home to the Ukrainian refugees. I wanted to give them a piece of that stability back. That warmth, that love, that routine of daily family life back to them. And I thought that was just such an amazing picture of, of God's love and care reaching out through her. And so it'll look different to each of us as to what we do, but that question... How can we be God's hands and feet in the lives of those around us? Amen.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thank you, God, for your unending love for us. Thank you, God, that though you are so big, you care for us each as individuals. Thank you, God, that you are there beside us in our joys. Thank you, God, that you are there beside us in our pains. Thank you, God, that you provide for us. Thank you, God, that you are our friend. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We join with God in bringing his kingdom, his will, and some of heaven, as we bring before him, with continuous prayer and petition, the things on our hearts. So we pause now and reflect on the cries of our hearts for those people in our families, friendships, communities and the world. And out loud or in silent communion, we share those cries with our Saviour. And we speak to those difficulties that we have named and say, God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, help us to know you are near and comfort us when our prayers aren't answered in the way we'd hope or in the timing we'd hoped for. Help us to discern the way you are opening for us, the yeses, the not yets and the different directions and give us the courage to walk those ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, we thank you that you know the need of each person on earth and you promise in Isaiah 65 verse 24 before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. We take a moment to lift ours and others' needs to you in the knowledge that you will hear our prayer and provide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus, you know what it is to be tempted, and we pray that you would help us to keep our wills aligned with yours. When we are in situations that lack fairness, openness or generosity, we ask that you would help us always to acknowledge these things and be inspired by you to act with an equal and opposite spirit even when it comes at a cost to ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring all our prayers together with the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
And so, let us declare our faith in God by saying together, We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God of grace and compassion, your Son Jesus Christ was part of a family in Nazareth. He knew the love of a mother and of a father, and by dying on the cross brought us all together as new family. Help us in the Christian journey to strive for that day when the whole of humanity is one family together in your church. Amen. And so may the Lord who brought us all to birth strengthen us in daily life. May the God who provides for all our needs sustain us day by day. And may the Lord, whose steadfast love is for all, send us out to live and work for others. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those you know, love, and pray for this day and forever. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.